This is section 2.3. This is part three. We're talking about greater than problems now. You will get unbounded answers. And remember what we mean by that is that you're not going to be able to draw an, a circle around your answer. You are going to have infinities involved. Answers should be graphed, shaded, and given an interval notation. Now, just like when we started with the less than problems, I started off, I'm going to start off with something very simple here. So you, one, you can see what's going on, and two, you can see how they're solved fairly easily. Okay, now I'll go back to the definition of an absolute value. We want numbers that are more than five units away from zero. So if zero is here, numbers that are more than five away, so here's a five, here's a negative five, both of these values are exactly five away. And now if we want to be greater than that, that's going to be out here and out here. All those values are more than five units away. Okay. This does not have an equal to, so these are going to get parentheses. Okay. Compare this graph to the graph we got when we did a less than. This had less than or equal to, the equal to gave us the brackets and we shaded between these. Here, we did not have an equal to and we shaded outside of them. It was exactly the same problem except for the direction of the sign. This will give you answers that shoot out. A less than problem will give you an answer that is bounded. How do we know how to tell them apart? Our absolute value is on the big side of the problem. Here, the absolute value is on the small side of the problem. Okay? So how do we get this thing worked? We already know kind of what our answer should be, but what's the process? It's going to feel fairly similar to what we've done before. First thing, you're going to drop the absolute value and write it exactly as it is. Okay. Now what we've done in all of them, both the equal to problem and the less than problem, is that we always dealt with a positive version of this and a negative version of this. We're still going to do that. Or, okay, x is, we have to flip this sign around, less than negative five, okay? So write it without the absolute value. Without the absolute value, change the sign, change the sign. Now all we do is flip this sign around. And if you look at your graph, you can kind of see what that, where that comes from. X is greater than five is going to give you these answers. X less than negative five is going to give you these answers. Okay. Normally you'll have something to solve here and then you'll put it on your graph. I need to see negative five. I need to see positive five. We know that they shoot in opposite directions. So I'll be shading here and I'll be shading here. And then because these are simple less thans, they get parentheses. Okay. Now writing your interval notation is a little bit trickier here because you have to describe each of these individually. And more than that, you have to recognize that this is an or, which means it is a union which means when we describe these two, we're going to have to use the union symbol. Okay, so this interval, its left-hand boundary, if you can call it a boundary, is negative infinity, comma, the right-hand side is negative five. Infinities always get parentheses. This has a parentheses, union. Now do this one. Its left-hand boundary is five. It goes up to positive infinity. Infinities always get parentheses the five header parentheses. So this is your answer in interval notation. Here is your answer graph. Okay, so let's do uh, the absolute value of r plus five is greater than 20. This should look familiar. We did basically the same problem with the less than. Okay, so if we're following the process we did before, the first thing we do is we write it just dropping the absolute value or without the absolute value, so r plus five, change the sign, change the sign. So this thing is either bigger than 20 or it's less than negative 20. All right, solve this. I'm going to add five to both sides and I get, uh, not add, subtract, subtract five from both sides. 
r is greater than 15 or r is less than, if I subtract 5, I get negative 25. Okay, these, are the, these two numbers are the same two numbers we got when we did the less than version. Okay, but now we're talking about opposite directions of these. The numbers I must see are negative 25 and I need to see 15. If you recognize this is a greater than problem, you should know automatically that they shoot out from these two. I want numbers larger than 15. Numbers larger than 15 are this way. I want numbers smaller than negative 25, which would be that way. Now each of these has a less than or a greater than no equal to on it, so these get parentheses. And then we write our interval notation the same way we did before. Start go from left to right. This interval will be negative infinity to negative 25. Parenthesis here always, and this is also parentheses. Union, don't forget your union symbol. 15, comma, infinity. With greater than problems, you're always going to have infinities on the outside. Okay, so let's try this greater than problem. The first thing I need to do is to get this absolute value by itself. Okay, I, if I try to split things out now, it's not going to work. I'll get one correct answer, I'll get one false answer. So I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides, and that gives me the absolute value of 4x plus 1 is greater than or equal to 21. Now, here, what we have here, we worked this problem earlier as a less than problem. Okay, so we're going to, this is a greater than problem because our absolute value is on the big side of the inequality. So first, I write 4x plus 1 is greater than or equal to 21, or 4x plus 1 is now flip the sign around, negative, um, less than or equal to, and make it negative 21. Okay. Now to solve these, I need to subtract 1 on each of these. 4x is greater than or equal to 20, or 4x is less than or equal to negative 22. Let's divide everything by a 4. To get x is greater than or equal to 5, or x is less than or equal to, that reduces to negative 11 halves. We got the same two numbers as we did when we worked it as a less than problem. We're just talking about different directions now. So I must see negative 11 halves and also 5. I'm looking for numbers bigger than 5, so these go off this direction. Numbers smaller than negative 11 halves, so that's this direction. These have equal to's, so they get brackets. Okay. Interval notation, this one starts at negative infinity and goes to negative 11 halves with a bracket. Infinities always get parentheses. Union, bracket, 5, comma, infinity, parentheses. Okay, so the last little topic are some special cases. Okay, anytime you see a negative number, um, if you have an absolute value by itself and you see a negative number, you have a special case. If there's a zero, you may or may not have a special case. We have to stop and think. Remember that if you take the absolute value of something, you will never get a negative answer. Your answer to an absolute value will either be a positive number or it will be zero. Okay, because the absolute value of zero is zero. If the absolute value of anything else is going to be a positive number. Okay, so let's look at this special case. I have the absolute value of four plus seven X is greater than or equal to negative one. Okay, now you might try to work this as a greater than problem because that's really what it looks like, but you'll end up with nonsense. Okay, and you're doing a lot more work than you need to. Always look here and be aware of zeros and negatives, okay? 
So let's think about this. This thing, no matter what number I plug in here, I, and I'll multiply it by seven, I'll add four, and then I'll take the absolute value. The absolute value is the last thing I'm going to do. So that means this side, I don't know the number value, but it's either a positive number or it's zero. That's the definition, part of the definition of, of absolute value. So ask yourself now, when is a positive value greater than or equal to negative one? Always. A positive is always bigger than negative one. When is a zero greater than negative one? Well, that's always true as well. This will always be true. It does not matter what number you plug in for x. After you do the arithmetic, you will either get a positive or a zero, and both of these are always greater than or equal to negative one. Since this thing is always true, we say our answer is negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay, and if you're asked to graph it, which often you're not in this case, but if you are, you just shade the whole thing. You don't put infinities on there. The whole thing is just your answer. Okay, now let's look at the other kind. I have an absolute value less than negative four. Remember, no matter what number I plug in here, I'll multiply it by eight, I'll add four, and then I'll take the absolute value of it. Absolute values will always give you either a positive number or zero. When is a positive number less than negative four? Never. When is zero less than negative four? Never. This is never true, so we say our answer is no solution, and we use the empty set for that. Okay, this is the end of 2.3.